let's add a custom item to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom item to Minecraft 119 with Forge. To add this item, there are actually a few steps required and we'll go through all of them step by step. So first of all, in your tutorial mod package, right click new package called item. And then instead of there, we're going to right click again, new Java class called mod items. This window will appear if you have added a GitHub repository to your project. If you do, then you just click the add button and then it will add your class to your version control system as well. If you don't have a GitHub repository, it won't appear and that's fine as well. Now, what do we need to add in this mod items class? Well, we will need a deferred register. This is, this is added in the following way, public, static, final, and then deferred register, you see one F and two R, and it already suggests this to us. So what we can then do is we can just press the tab key to import the class and automatically generate the rest of the class name as well. Now we need the angle bracket here. And inside of there, we put item. This is from net Minecraft world item. So then we can press the tab key again, and it's going to import the class as well. Then afterwards, we're going to name this items equals deferred register. Once again, I just clicked the tab key to autocomplete the entire class name dot create. Once again, just a tab that will also autocomplete the method name and will generate the open and close parentheses inside of which we're going to write forge registries tab dot items inside of which we're going to write forge registries. Once again, tab to autocomplete dot items comma tutorial mod dot mod ID and then end everything with a semicolon. And then we'll need a public static void method called register with an i event bus called event bus and inside of it we're going to say items dot register passing in the event bus parameter to the register method over here now this register method that we've just created we actually have to call inside of our tutorial mod class so between the mod event bus and the add listener over here we want to say mod items dot register and then passing in the mod event bus right here and that will register our mod items and any item that we basically add is going to be properly registered. Going back to the mod items class. Now the question comes, how do we add an item? Well, it actually is fairly straightforward. So we want to say public static final registry object. Once again, this one right here, or tab to autocomplete. And then in the angle brackets, we want to say item. Once again, this is going to be circon. And this is equal to items referencing the items deferred register right here dot register. And then I'm going to type in a string. Now, as soon as I add the quotation marks, this bus here will appear. This generates automatically. You do not have to type this out. And then we can proceed to the name. The name here is going to be Circon. The naming conventions for items, blocks, and all of that follows the same convention as the mod ID. Lowercase characters only and no spaces, none of that. Only lowercase characters, numbers, underscores. That's all fine. So keep that in mind as well. After the string, we're going to make a comma and then a new supplier. So this is just going to be open and close parentheses, followed by this arrow over here, and then a new item. So once again, we're going to choose net Minecraft world item. I'm just going to press the tab key to autocomplete. And inside of it, we need new item properties. So it already suggests this to us. Once again, just a tab to autocomplete. And this is a builder pattern. So if I'm just going to do properties dot something, then you can see these are all of the things that we can basically, well, add to it. We can say, hey, uh, this particular item only stacks to this many, this number of items. We can set a creative mode tab, which we're going to do in just a moment. We can set a craft remainder, default durability, fire resistant, food, rarity, and set no repair. But we want the tab here and we want to then say creative mode tab. And you can see once again, it already suggests things to us. We're just going to add this to the miscellaneous tab for the time being. So I selected it, press the tab key again, and then we're just going going to end with a semicolon and that is our item registered. Now the item would already be in game. However, there are quite a few things that are still missing, namely the name, namely the texture. How do we supply the texture? That is all to come as well. So textures and all of that are going to be added in the resources folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click new directory called assets and inside of the assets folder, right click new directory. And this is going to be called tutorial mod. So this needs to be exactly our mod ID, the one that we have defined right here. So this one has to be the same name as this one. Make sure that this is written correctly. And now we come to the folder structure in the assets folder. This is extremely important. So please pay attention in the assets folder inside of your, the folder that is named after your mod ID. You're going to right click new directory called block states. 
This is the first one. Then we're gonna go into the tutorial mod folder again, right click new directory called Lang, L-A-N-G. We're gonna go back to the tutorial mod folder once again, right click new directory called models. We're gonna go there one more time, right click new directory called textures. Make sure that all of those are written correctly. They are all contained in the tutorial mod folder that is contained in the assets folder that is contained in the resources folder. This is the exact way that the folder structure has to be set up. Otherwise, it will not work. Following along in the models folder, we now want to right click new directory and this is going to be called block. And then once again in the models directory, right click new directory called item. Once again, this is item. This is block, not blocks, not items. Models folder, block, models folder, item. Please make sure this is done correctly. In the textures folder, we're going to do the same thing. Right click new directory called item and then right click new directory called block. Now the block directories we're not going to need in this tutorial specifically. However, making sure they are already set up properly is going to be, it's just going to make our lives a little bit easier in the next tutorial. Right then what we need, well, let's start from the top to bottom. The block states are also only needed for the blocks. So we're not going to fill anything in here, but the lang folder is actually very important. So we're going to right click on this new file called en underscore us.json. Make sure that this is written correctly. Nothing crazy, not, nothing like a space at the front, en underscore us.json. Hit enter and then we can actually proceed to the actual file. So the file will look like this. It's going to have curly brackets. If you type the first curly bracket, the closing curly bracket will generate automatically. And inside of here, we can determine the translation from a key to the actual name that is going to be displayed inside of the game. I'm going to show this with the item. So we're just going to have a string over here, item.tutorialmod.circon, and that is the key colon and then here we're going to have the name as displayed in the inventory or you know in the game basically how does the key work this is of course an item so in our mod items we can remember well we have registered an item called circon okay fair enough and if you think about it so it's an item under our mod id so tutorial mod which is our mod id and then the name of the item is circon so this name right here matches this name right here. And then this name, whatever we type in here, is then displayed in the inventory when we, for example, hover over the item. Right, we'll proceed to the models folder and to the item folder. We're going to right click on this new file and this is going to be called the circon.json. So the name of this file is very important. The name of this file has to match exactly the name that we're passing in here into the register method. Extremely important. Make sure that this is written correctly. Now I'm going to show you the contents of this. So once again, we're going to start with the open curly bracket. The close curly bracket will generate automatically. Then we want a parent over here. So this is going to be written like this. And then inside of here, item slash generated. Then we'll make a comma. And then the next one is going to be textures, colon, open curly bracket. Once again, the close one will generate automatically. We're going to have layer zero, colon, tutorial mod, colon, item, slash, circon. If that was too quick, all of this is available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual just as well. And I will explain one more time. So it is very important. The parent here, right, is item slash generated. It isn't item slash generated. It isn't items uppercase generated. It is items generated. Make sure that this is written correctly. Double, triple, eight times check this. I've seen this time and time again. My textures don't work. And what was it? It was just a simple typo somewhere in here. You have all of this available to you in the description below, as I've said, in a gist. So you can open that, look at it side by side, and then hopefully if something does not work, you will find the issue. Then we come to the textures. So the textures here, right? This is textures, very important. And then it is later zero. So this you know, shouldn't be any surprise. This is our mod ID. And then we have inside of the string here, colon item slash zircon. What does that mean? Well, this simply points to the textures folder. And then inside of it, we're looking for an item folder. Now, luckily we've already created this. That's pretty good. And then inside of that item folder, we're looking for a PNG called zircon. So I'm going to copy this over. This will also be available for, to you for download. And you can see right now we have a zircon.png, which is this one right here in the item folder which is this one right here in the textures folder, which is this one right here. And that is one of the examples for the item model JSON files. And now our item would be inside of the game. However, we're not done quite yet because some people are confused. Well, how do I add another item? Do I need to make another mod items class? Of course not. That is ridiculous. Mainly, of course, because it's called mod items, not mod item. 
right? So that should be the first hint right here. But no, we just need a new registry object. So the way that I add a new item, basically I'm just going to select it all, press Control D to duplicate it, and then we can change this around. So this is going to be also raw zircon, and then the name here, also raw zircon. Make sure that your names do not match. If you have the same name twice, then your game actually will not start. So keep that in mind and make sure that that is not the case. Let's proceed to go into the en underscore use JSON file once again. And here I will do the same thing. I'll just select all of it, press control D to duplicate the line. And then I'm just going to change this to raw zircon. And then here also raw zircon. Now I've already prepared the JSON file, but what you can basically do here is you can just drag the same JSON file into the same folder while holding control. This will duplicate the file. And then you can change the name over here to raw zircon. All right, we'll say, okay. And then here, it of course doesn't point to the Zircon PNG, but it will point to the raw Zircon PNG. This one I will also copy over, and this is also available to you for a download in the description below. Now, currently we have this under the miscellaneous creative mode tab. That is going to be fine. And we're going to look at this in game for the time being, but then we'll also add, after I've shown you the first demonstration, we're also going to add our own custom creative mode tab. But for the time being, this is all that we need. So let's start the game and see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft, and let's just go to the miscellaneous tab all the way down. And there we have it, Sircon, and we also have the raw Sircon as well. So you can see, I can throw them around and we have everything here inside of the game. So that is perfect. That is great. And now let's actually see how we can also add this to a custom creative mode tab. All right, the custom creative mode tab is actually fairly straightforward. So once again, in the item package, we're going to right click new Java class called the mod creative mode tab. And then inside of there, we need a public static final creative mode tab right here. We're just going to press tab to autocomplete. I'm just going to call this the tutorial underscore tab. This is equal to a new creative mode tab. And you can see it already suggests this to us with the curly bracket and then the three dots. That is completely correct. So we're going to do this and then it will generate a method here for us as well. So what we want to do is we want to end this with a semicolon because what we're doing here is we're actually creating a new anonymous class in this case and that is going to be fine. So this is going to be a tutorial mod tab. That's okay. Or just call it tutorial tab. That's also actually fine. Tutorial tab. There you go. And then we also need to re return here a icon. This is an item stack. So we're just going to say new item stack and then passing in mod items dot zircon dot get. And this will make the icon of our custom creative mode tab a zircon. If you want another creative mode tab, you can just basically duplicate all of this, making sure that this is a different name, of course. And then also here that you have a different name right here. And then you can, for example, pass in a different item over here. And now you would have a second tab. And there you go. But for our purposes, we only need one for the time being. And that's going to be fine. Then in our mod items class, instead of using the creative mode tab, tab miscellaneous, we, what we can do is we can say mod creative mode tab dot tutorial tab, and that will then assign the items to our custom creative mode tab instead of assigning it to any one of the vanilla ones. We can also delete the import over here, and then we're going to be totally fine. Well, let's go into the game and see if our custom creative mode tab also has been added. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft once again. And if I open the inventory, you can already see this is a very good sign. One of two, because if we go to the second page, you have this right here. Now, we just have not added the translation for the tab, but that is something that is very easily done. You can, however, see both of our items are inside of the, our custom tab over here. So everything working pretty much exactly how you would expect it to. Right, and last but not least, let's also add the translation over here. We actually saw this as item group tutorial tab over here and this is just going to be called let's call it the zircon tutorial tab there you go and that should also add the translation as well right and that would conclude this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new and i'll see you all in the next tutorial so yeah